As this video will show you, not everything is what at first they seem to be. From the truth about Bear Grylls and the Carlton dance, to what Hello Kitty actually is, here are 10 everyday things that pretty much prove that many things we believe in are not at all true. Amazing! Number 10. The Magic 8-Ball is practically hollow. The Magic 8-Ball is one of those classic pointless toys that you likely had growing up. It claims to be a fortune-telling device that would respond when you ask it a question. In reality, all of us older than about 12 knew that it was just chucking out a load of random statements, much like those hidden in fortune cookies. Even so, surely it must have been utilising every last bit of space in that ball in order to compute its complex predictions. Well, you'd be wrong to assume so. All it is, is a hollow plastic sphere, which inside houses a cylindrical reservoir containing some blue dye and a piece of white plastic which has the responses embossed on it. When you shake it and then turn it upward, all that happens is that the liquid and the piece inside is set into motion and when the die floats to the top, one of the faces of the white piece is pressed against the window, with the raised letters displacing the liquid, showing you the response. Number 9. Bear Grylls Bear Grylls is everyone's favourite adventurer and survival presenter. He served in the elite SAS and has come out the other side to present TV as a genuinely captivating personality, capable of stomaching insects and drinking his own wee like a true champ. And whilst we watch him teach us extreme survival tips we'll probably never use, we can't help but wonder if there's really just a backstage buffet ready for him once the cameras turn off. Well, it seems the rumours are unfortunately true, as this picture pretty much catches him and his TV crew red-handed. On top of that, there was a public outcry over allegations that he spent some of his time during the production of his Born Survivor series staying in a nearby hotel. Instead of surviving unaided in the hell holes of the world, a crew member was reported saying that after the camera stopped, Grills would often stay in hotels where he'd eat blueberry pancakes. Number 8. The Weasley twins don't have ginger hair. James and Oliver Phelps, the two actors who portrayed the hilarious redhead twins Fred and George Weasley in the Harry Potter films, are not natural redheads. It may come as a surprise to some Harry Potter fans, but it's true. During the filming of the Harry Potter movies, their hair was dyed and their roots were touched up every three weeks, for years. According to the twins, the worst part of becoming gingers was bleaching their eyebrows. Apparently, during filming, one time an intern was on set dyeing Oliver's eyebrows and left the bleach on for too long. Later, he walked onto the set in a cross mood. His eyebrows were so white afterwards that they apparently had to draw them on for several weeks. Number 7. Colton's dance isn't entirely his own creation. Fans of the 90s sitcom hit The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air will immediately recognise this dance performed by Alfonso Ribeiro, who plays Colton Banks in the show. The Colton dance is so iconic it remains talked about, gift and cracked out at parties to this day, with Ribeiro even working it into his Dancing with the Stars routine. So how did he come up with it? Apparently he didn't, he sort of copied it. It's more like the product of a Venn diagram of moves by Courtney Cox, Bruce Springsteen and Eddie Murphy. According to Ribeiro, during an interview with Variety, the dance was improvised because the script simply read, Carlton Dances. He confessed that the basis of the dance was inspired by Courtney Cox in the Bruce Springsteen video, Dancing in the Dark. He also noted that it was inspired by Eddie Murphy's Delirious video, in which he calls this dance, The White Man Dance. But my question to you, Mr. Murphy, is if white people really had bad moves, then explain this kid. Number 6. Hawaiian Pizza If you're a fan of our Foods That Are A Lie series of videos, then you'll like this one. Now, Hawaiian Pizza is quite controversial, as a fierce debate still goes on about whether pineapple actually belongs on pizza. A lot of people have gone public about it. Last February, the Icelandic president even publicly proposed banning pineapples on pizzas. Others like Gordon Ramsay agree with him. Regardless, at least one thing is for sure, that Hawaiian pizza, the iconic pizza featuring pineapple rings or chunks with bacon and other toppings, is at least from Hawaii, right? Actually, it isn't. Nor is it liked by the Hawaiian population more than any other population. It's a culture-spanning lie. 
This pizza variety was actually invented in Canada. It was invented by a Greek-born Canadian immigrant named Sam Panopoulos, who in 1962 made the first ever Hawaiian pizza. The invention placed him in the pantheon of history, and although he sadly died last month, I'm sure he's currently dining on an 18-inch thin-crusted pepperoni and pineapple glory in the afterlife. So, how did it get its name? Apparently, it was, again, all Panopoulos' idea. From the start, he called his creation Hawaiian Pizza, though he didn't patent the name. The reason for this? It's just the place most people think of when they think of pineapple. Number 5. Wooden pavers aren't at all what they seem. You've likely seen wooden pavers like these before without batting an eyelid. They're just wooden planks for paving patios and the like, right? Of course not. These ones, like many out there, are in fact made from concrete. Many pavers like this offer a wood grain look that gives them a rustic colour, texture and appearance of weathered barn wood. They look exactly like wooden planks, whereas all they are is a block of concrete with a wooden texture stamped onto the top. They're often used instead of wood because they're cheaper, tougher, and look extremely similar, especially when aged. Most importantly, they don't require as much upkeep as wood, which can rot. So next time you see a garden paving that appears like wood, you now know that it probably isn't actually the real deal. Number four, this experiment. Back in 2013, TheAtlantic.com were the first to pick up on an eye-opening experiment about the enlarged variety of everyone's favourite cookie, the Oreo. The experiment, conducted by high school teacher Dan Anderson of Queensbury, New York, was an exercise in applied consumer mathematics. He had students do some measuring, calculating and reflecting. What they found shook the world to the core. The double stuff Oreos only had 1.86 times the stuff of regular Oreos, and the mega Oreos had 2.68 times the stuff. The mega stuffs are an incremental step beyond the double stuffs, which were introduced in 1974. The mega stuffs themselves were introduced because evidently Nabisco, the makers of the Oreo, got concerned that there was not enough stuff on the market. Yeah, you know why? Because you're underfilling them by 0.14 times less than they should be. This is a serious concern, people. Whilst Anderson's class is meant to help struggling mathematics students, he probably had no idea he'd be tarnishing the reputation of an iconic American sandwich cookie. But really, this shouldn't come as much of a surprise. After all, chocolate bars and crisps over the years are consistently underfilled. On top of that, this story came out just a few months later than people found out that Subway were doing a similar thing with their footlong sandwiches. A photo by Perth teenager Matt Corby went viral on Subway Subway's Australia Facebook page showing a foot long sub that was only 11 inches long with the beautiful caption, Subway, please respond. They did, stating that references to foot long are not intended to explicitly guarantee its length, instead claiming that foot long is just a name and metric they strive for. What a disappointment! Number 3. Hello Kitty isn't a cat. Hello Kitty, a brand sporting its own TV series and even theme parks, is insanely popular. It's actually somewhat worrying how popular it is sometimes. If you've watched a lot of our videos, you'll know that there are numerous Hello Kitty houses around the world. People like the character so much, they build frickin' houses styled around it. And in Japan, it's a staple of the kawaii popular culture. And last time I checked, a kitty is just a kitten, or pet name for a cat. All pretty obvious, right? I mean, the character has whiskers and pointy ears. Surely it's a cat. Wrong, according to the president of Sanrio, the Japanese company that created the character. When asked by Laura Beck of Cosmopolitan magazine, Janet Su, the president of Sanrio, said, Kitty is a girl, even though she looks like a cat. However, what we like to say is that Hello Kitty is in a class of her own, and she is to you what she is to you. By that logic, if I were to then say that Hello Kitty is a fridge, then she is exactly that. Number two, Barry Scott is a lie. If you're from the UK or Europe, and you haven't been living under a rock for years, you've seen the Silit Bang adverts featuring a brashly confident cleaning enthusiast, Barry Scott. Hi, I'm Barry Scott. Apparently, for those of you outside Europe, the product is sold as Easy Off Bam, with similar packaging and spray bottle design. 
The guy who presents the Easy Off Bam commercials clearly isn't as iconic as Barry Scott, though he definitely is a fan of our intro. Amazing! Anyways, a load of these Silip Bang adverts featuring Barry Scott have played on our TV screens since 2005, featuring the catchphrase Bang, the dirt is gone! He basically fools around with the Silip Bang cleaning spray, performing various penny dipping and cleaning tests that some of those home experiment YouTubers would be envious of. This marketing campaign clearly hit the spot, as they later got him riding slides, roller coasters, and performing his tests in front of jets, like rappers do when they make it and have to spend all their money somehow. So what's the lie here? Well, what's disturbing is that our mate, Barry Scott, is a lie. He doesn't exist. They made him up, probably to fool us into thinking he was a very average bloke and not at all an actor. Turns out, Barry Scott is really Neil Burgess, an actor who, with a simple Google, isn't really the cleaning guru we've been led to believe he was. Number one, the Powerball is a lie. You may be familiar with these dishwasher detergent tablets that are advertised as having a Powerball centered in the middle of the tablet, like some sort of ultra powerful bacteria killing explosive bomb. I for one always thought it was spherical. I mean, the packaging clearly displays a shiny red ball about to intimidate those greasy glasses and plates with its explosive power. It appears that this is actually just amazing marketing and a great fat lie, which has been fooling us for years. If you actually remove the red dot from the center of the tablet, you will see that all it is, is a sort of tablet with a domed top. I suppose it's just a lot easier and cheaper to manufacture, so when you think about it, it shouldn't come as much of a surprise. Which of these revelations surprised you the most? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and click that bell icon to stay updated. Thanks for watching!